So I want everyone here to imagine yourselves when you were 12 years old. Like let's say you're in sixth or seventh grade and just imagine how your normal life would be in that day. Like you might be going to school, just going to your classes, like maybe even one moment in the day, you might go to the bathroom. Let's say just imagine yourself going to the bathroom and seeing four students there just vaping out there in the open. Currently, this, is, this happens a lot. Like, this happened to me once, and this was the first time I ever saw vaping in schools. I was really, really surprised by this. And so throughout the rest of the day, I couldn't help but just always think about this. And then the next day, I go to school, I talk to some of my friends about this, and they're unfazed by it. I ask them, why are you guys unfazed by this? Isn't this a serious matter? But a lot of my friends basically just told me, oh, this is really common. We see this all the time. Um, and this is the stark reality of how it is for middle schoolers and high schoolers. Vaping is relatively common in bathrooms and in the open. So my name is Abhinav Avaru, and I'm here to talk to you guys about vaping in teenagers. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Uh, basically, I'm a sophomore in National High School South. Um, after I was really surprised by seeing vaping in schools, um, for example, just over this, over this last year, there's been a lot of different times where I've seen somebody vaping in the bathroom, and it's to the point where it's kind of common at this point. So I was really surprised by this, and I started researching into vapes themselves, and I actually built a vape detection device, and I presented it at the New Hampshire Science and Engineering Expo. Uh, I won first place, and uh, I'll be presenting my research in the International Science and Engineering Fair in Atlanta in May. I also presented at a local middle school, uh, World Academy, uh, to a lot of seventh and eighth graders, and I was really surprised by how many of the middle schoolers, they don't really know too much about vapes. They don't know that it's really harmful. They don't really know what's actually in a vape. There are a lot of different common misconceptions about vapes out there, and this really leads to a lot of vape usage. So based on a study that was done, uh, in 2011, less than 2% of actual all high school students actually vaped. But as years started to go by, in 2018, it rose to over 20%. Um, this has become one of the biggest problems among school age students. Uh, so what's actually, what a vape actually is, it's a device that heats up a liquid that's known as an e-juice to create an aerosol. One of the biggest misconceptions among middle school students and especially the younger students is that it creates sort of like a harmless water vapor or a flavored water vapor that just consists of something that makes it addicting. So there are a lot of different type of vapes out there in the market. There are vape pods, vape mods, uh, e cig like e-cigs, but the most commonly used one is the vape pod and Juul is the most common vape pod out there. So Juul is really what has contributed to the rise in vaping over the past few years. Uh, they, basically divide, uh, they basically designed their device to look like a USB, and it's really discreet and easy to use. Along with that, so they're based in Silicon Valley, so they focused a lot on advertisement, on design, and really t this targeted teenagers and led to uh, an increase in vaping for teenagers. So along with that, the aerosol in the vape is really, really dangerous. It consists of a lot of dangerous chemicals like volatile organic compounds, uh, cancer-causing chemicals, uh, nicotine, and heavy metals. So especially when I was talking to middle schoolers, um, I really came to learn that they really didn't know what the difference between an aerosol and a vapor was, at least for some of them. And what an aerosol really is, is it's a gas combined with some solids in it so that's really what makes the vape really harmful uh, because people, uh, some people really think that it's like, as I stated before, a harmless water vapor. This really leads to an increase in vaping. Along with that, vapes contain nicotine and this is one of the most important components of, of vapes. Uh, it's a drug that's found in tobacco plants and in insecticide as well. It's a poisonous and addictive chemical that can cause a lot of different health conditions. Specifically, it targets an area in the brain that produces dopamine, which is a pleasure-causing chemical. And what dopamine does is it stimulates the body. It, it's exactly what the name implies. It causes happiness or pleasure. And this is really what's making vapes super addictive. Uh, there's a lot more nicotine in vapes than in the traditional cigarettes. Uh, in just one jewel pod, there's the same nicotine concentration as around 
uh, two cigarette packets. So along with that, what makers of vape do is that they use a type of nicotine called nicotine salts, which is differing from the nicotine in cigarettes. Uh, nicotine salts are really low on the pH scale, so they're a lot less harsh on the throats. Um, cigarettes use free-based nicotine, which are really harsh on the throats, and this is one of the main reasons why a lot of teenagers vape, because they can vape for an extended period now uh, compared to smoking uh, without really getting that harshness on their throat. So along with that, vapes cause a lot of brain and lung damage. Um, as I stated before, nicotine specifically targets the brain. Along with that, after it targets the brain, this results into a decrease in uh, learning ability. It, it harms impulse control, it harms mood. Along with that, adolescents' brains are still developing. Our, fr our brains don't fully develop until the age of 25. So we're a lot more susceptible to nicotine and to vapes in general. Along with that, a lot of lung damage occurs. Uh, lung cancer can occur. There can be a condition called popcorn lung that also occurs. Along with that, as I stated before, I was talking about Juul and how they're a Silicon, based, uh, Silicon Valley based company. Their advertising specifically targets teenagers. Um, they have advertisements with celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Miley Cyrus. They really glorify vaping. Along with that, with, in the age of internet, uh, a lot of vaping ads are there on like dark websites and stuff like that. Um, so a lot of advertisement actually reaches teenagers. Along with that, vaping's really glorified in all these advertisements. It makes it seem like it's cool. So flavoring also is one of the main reasons why teens are brought into vaping. So Juul, what they did was they created a lot of different flavors of vapes, like mint and different fruit flavors. However, there was a flavor ban on vapes in 2019, but a lot of different companies worked their way around it, uh, supplying flavors like banana ice, and it's still a major issue. So I know a lot of you guys might be thinking, okay, what am I supposed to do with this info? How can I actually work to, solve, to try to stop this issue? So what, the first thing that you really need to do is obviously never to vape. Along with that, avoiding secondhand exposure is a big thing, like not being near people that actually vape, because secondhand exposure is also extremely dangerous. Not ex extremely dangerous as firsthand exposure of vaping, but it's still dangerous nonetheless. Along with that, if you have any friends or family that actually vape, try to talk to them. Like, try to slowly educate them about this and try to bring them out of vaping. Along with that, um, if you guys know any younger students, like younger elementary kids or uh, young middle school students, like talk to them about the effects of vaping. If we all do our part, eventually vaping, the problem of vaping will go away in high school students. Thank you. <laughs>